Hello, kaiju lovers. My apologies. I, I'm still trying to figure out how the kaiju ramen is set up for StreamYard is working. I was going to play a countdown so that I could send the link out to the patrons to remind them that we got all the stuff going on tonight with the live stream. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. I honestly don't know if anybody's going to show up for this. But I figured I, I would hold it anyway. The uh, The first portion of this will be going out on the podcast feed. The audio, I am Nate Marchand, obviously. Well, Nathan Marchand. I'm not MIFV Nate tonight for this live stream. So my plan right now is to do a play-by-play, -play, talk about everything that happened at All Monsters Attack 2, Chicago SOS, <laughs> last weekend. And then I'm going to, for the Patreon exclusive portion, I'm going to go over the my haul from there. And then I'm going to give a quick update on the production of the remainder of Season 3 because I'm sure a lot of you are really wanting to know. And as the people who pay me to do this, I figured I owe it to all of you to give you first wind of all of this. So... Let's get started, shall we? Let's get started. Although, I am going to go check on Patreon here really quick. Find the link to the live stream. Let me see. Let me see. So, there's the link. There is the link, and I'm going to share it out with a handful of people. Let me see. Copy. Alrighty, and I will send this out on Messenger. Alright, I'm going to keep vamping really hard here. <laughs> but I will start by saying it was interesting in a lot of ways to go to All Monsters Attack. Because last year, as you heard in some previous, in some previous stuff, it was held over at the uh, over in Indianapolis, the state capital for my home state, obviously. And now it was moved to Chicago, but not just any place in Chicago. No, G Fest Old Stomping Grounds, the Crown Plaza Hotel. You want to talk about sending a message? I'm just saying. That was a pretty bold move on their parts there. <laughs> going right th going straight for the jugular. And it's been kind of amusing seeing both G-Fest and AMA, as that's what we're calling it, uh, see them take some shots at each other. It's Well, it's been amusing, but also <laughs> kind of petty all at the same time. It's weird how that all plays out. Let me see. I'm still trying to get stuff out to people. But in a lot of ways, it was kind of a pilgrimage. It was you know, it was a return. I, the only thing I didn't do was go find the old panel room where I did my first ever panel with the with, uh, with Danny uh, for G Fest, which is in the little panel room downstairs. So that was a little unfortunate, but that's okay. That is okay, because we were very busy. I, this is the first time I've tabled at a kaiju convention for anything, and in this case, it was obviously for Kaiju Ramen Media. Sorry, like I said, I'm still trying to share the link out with people. My apologies. Looking at my list here. And it was the first time that we had tabled anywhere when before this we had been relying purely on word of mouth, social media presence. So it was nice to actually get out there and interact with people in an official capacity when it wasn't just representatives going to all of the different places, you know, like G-Fest or other conventions and just talking about doing it. No, we were actually there in an official capacity. 
So that was very nice. And uh, spoiler warning, we were very successful. <laughs> we made up for the cost of our table, which is always a good sign. We made up for it inside of, well, the first day, which I'll get to here in a moment once I get, okay, there we go. There we go. So I'm going to X off of that, X off of there. X off of Patreon, and now I'm going to focus on telling all of you what happened. So, a little bit of background. This, just like last year, Michael, Michael Hamilton, my co-host on The Power Trip and frequent voice actor on here, frequent guest on the Monster Island Film Fault, and formerly of, well, I guess not formerly anymore because it kind of, rose from the ashes, reincarnated, however you want to put it, Kaiju Weekly. So, uh, he came to visit me from West Virginia, like he did last fall for the first day of May. But this time, he was not alone. No. This time, he brought our co-host in common. Wait. There's the button. <laughs> I was hit a different one. <laughs> Travis Alexander who, you know, and both of them are the co-founders of Kaiju Ramen Magazine, and Travis, like I said, recently revived Kaiju Weekly, his old podcast. So, here we are. Well, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Hold on. Hold on, Marchand. All right. So, first thing I need to mention is Travis spent the week at, in West Virginia with Michael. Travis is from Mississippi. See, I got it right. I got it right. That was a running joke throughout the weekend is that for some other reason, actually, it's been going on for a while. I keep thinking that he's from Louisiana. I don't know why. I keep thinking he's from Louisiana, but I've heard him talk about Louisiana a lot, and I do have other friends, the Moras, Dallas and Celeste, who are from Miss from. Now I'm getting them mixed up from Louisiana. So my apologies for that. Anyway, so he spent the week there, and then they made, a, I believe it's about four or five hours, if I remember correctly, drive from West Virginia over to where I live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Well, here, there was a little bit of a snag with all of this. I had, one, I had to work that uh, that day, so there was that. The other thing was I had committed, before I knew they were going to come, committed to doing a showcase because in case you don't know, one of the things I do in my spare time is I do ballroom dancing. And they had a showcase last week. Basically, it's a recital. It's a show where you you perform to show everybody this is what you've been learning. So I had committed to doing that. I was going to be in two numbers. I was really just an extra in one. And then I was going to uh, do my own with another fellow student. So... <laughs> So I told them, you're either just going to have to hang out at my apartment for you know, for the evening, or you're going to have to come watch. And Michael, being Michael, said, oh, I'm going to come watch and see you do ballet. You're going to wear a tutu? Just for you, Michael, just for you. And then he got mad because I let the instructors, the, uh, the owners of the studio know that they were coming to see me. And that they were joking about this being ballet and having a tutu. And then when they were greeted at the door to pay for their admission, <laughs> Kelly, the wife of the husband or wife duo who owned the place, said, there will be no tutus. And then Michael got mad. He's like, you ratted me out. I was like, of course I did, Hamilton. Of course I did. <laughs> but what's interesting is it was at that very studio where I finally, after faking it for three and a half years, <laughs> well, it's been, yeah, about three years, I finally met Travis Alexander in person. It's so funny. So there's so that's a momentous occasion for me. So I'm finally getting to meet my, uh, my kaiju content creator, Posse, in real life now. It's not just on the internet. They're real people. <laughs> so so there was that, which was really fun. So that was pretty fun. But I was also very focused on getting my routines done and, and getting through just that whole evening. So and in case you didn't figure it out, it was the May the 4th Be With You showcase because Star Wars Day. And I died twice. Because I was in the opening number as an extra where an older gentleman and Kelly 
did a, if I remember correctly, it was a quick step routine to a, I think it was a remix of the Cantina music from the first Star Wars movie. And I was the guy who got his arm cut off. I had a fake arm and everything. And uh, Steve was the other guy's name, and he had a lightsaber. He was dressed like Obi Wan Kenobi. It was great. And then in the other one, I was Peter Parker slash Spider Man to the song "Hero" from the first Tobey Maguire Spider Man movie, which is one of the I think maybe two "quote unquote" Nickelback songs I actually like. It's popular to make fun of Nickelback. So anyway, they came. They watched that. Everybody had a good time. We got back to the apartment relatively late at night. We all got situated. I finished my packing, and then we got ourselves a decent amount of sleep to prepare for the long trip ahead. Now, we were going to gain an hour going from Fort Wayne to Chicago, and and we didn't need to be there until a little bit later. The con did not officially start until 5, and then I think it went to 5 to 10, went five to ten, but they let the VIPs, the VIPs as we called them, in at about 4.30, so they got first dibs on everything. So we knew we had to have stuff set up by then. Well, I get up the next day thinking we're just going to go straight into getting ready and going, and there's Michael playing Gigabash. Playing Gigabash. Now, the night before when I was waiting for them to go get a late dinner and then come back to the apartment... When they got there, I was playing Gigabash because I was playing Gigabash to kill some time. So here's Michael playing Gigabash the next morning. Well, Travis sleeps. Okay, wasn't necessarily expecting that. So then he and I play Gigabash together for a little bit. And due to that and some other things, we didn't leave exactly when we wanted to. We left a little bit later than we would have liked. All of that to say... When we got there, and then we had we we ran into some some trap some nice Chicago traffic when we were there, so it slowed us down, and it was just delays all around. I'm going to be honest with you. So we didn't get there until I think we got there about a half an hour, if not more, later than we would have liked. We had to set up very quickly, and a lot of the stuff we had, like our banners and everything, we had never set up before. So it was. A little harrowing, to say the least, getting everything put together in time. I do have, let me see if it'll work here. <laughs> Here's an incentive for those of you who are listening to this on the podcast uh, on the podcast feed. Join MIFE Max so you can get the visuals. So let's see how well I can. Let me see. Uh, here we go. I've got the, the photos section here. So we got a picture here. So this was our table. That's Travis and Michael. That was on the first day. This did get sent out on the Kaiju Ramen pod uh, on the Kaiju Ramen socials. I'm sorry, getting a little situated here. So yeah, those two banners there, I helped put up. It's really nice. We got, and the banner there in the center. I was housing these things for several months. They were shipped to me in anticipation of going to this convention, and then we got. Uh, we had, as you can tell, we had the latest three issues of the magazine. We had some the remainders of Volume 1, which collects issues 1 through 4 that we kickstarted. It was available only through Kickstarter, so we had some leftovers for that. And we also had our con-exclusive Power Trip collection, which was which is the four articles that Michael did. That <laughs> Originally, the podcast was supposed to supplement the articles, and then it eventually just turned into the opposite. <laughs> Also, hello, Henshin Men listeners. I am going to send this out on the Henshin Men feed, too, because it would be relative to your interests as well to hear all of this. And then we had our buttons and stickers and all of our freebies and all that. And you can't see it very well in this picture, but we also had some leftover issues from issue of issue three, which was good because the cover artist for that, Kaiju Hime, was there. In fact, she was a few tables back in there but for those of you who are familiar with g-fest what you're looking at here was the dealer hall for many years the dealer hall for g-fest and now it was basically housing the entire convention other than a photo op room and one ballroom that was used 
for which was directly next door, the one ballroom that was set aside for panels, most of which were just the celebrity interviews, which is the other thing that All Monsters Attack is well known for because its guest list goes on for days. For days. Whereas G-Fest seems to be focusing on having a handful of high-profile guests. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. All right. So, we so so we got everything set up and things went pretty well on that first day. Let me see. The oh, stop sharing. There we go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> so, uh, so we so we got there, got everything set up, and I'm looking at the pictures I have after that and most of those are uh those are not necessarily relevant. So, the one of the first panels that they had that day, checking my notes here, was for Dore Kraus. And I finally learned how to say his name properly, I'm glad to say. So, Dore Kraus. Dore Kraus, for those who don't know, actually played Ultraman in a show called Ultraman Towards the Future, which has since been well in japan it's called ultraman great it was actually produced in australia which is kind of interesting and it was at a point where in japan they're just super i just wasn't producing much of any material of their own for ultraman ultraman was basically on hiatus at that point so he was the star he was the uh, ultra host he was so he was the ultraman so I went to his panel and got to learn some stuff behind the scenes and found out things like, you know, he was a big fan of Bruce Lee and was big into martial arts, which he didn't really get to do a whole lot on that show. And, excuse me, and he hasn't really done any acting since he basically retired from acting. But I also found out he's half Japanese. He was just living in Australia, so he's not necessarily Australian. He li- lives in San Diego now. And... I mean, I'm going to have to get a hold of the right people because I forgot to talk to the right people in order to do this. But it sounds like he would be interested in being interviewed on a podcast, which is really exciting. So I don't know which podcast that will be. It could be either MIFV or Henshin Men for that matter, because what he did applies to both. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so that was pretty fun. And then after that, if I remember correctly, yeah, we just finished out the day. We, as I mentioned, we made back the cost of our table by the end of day one. We sold out all, I think we had around 10 or so, 9, 10 copies of volume one left over that we were selling for $50 a piece. And I think we sold all but one by the end of the day. I was sure we were going to sell out all of them. It, d- it helped that we had prime positioning while we were there because we were on, as you saw, we were on the far end of the dealer hall, well, you know, the room, and we were right there by where all of the, uh, all the celebrity guests were, and in fact, we were directly across the hall from both Bob Eccleton, the legendary Bob Eccleton, and I almost said Matt Smith, <laughs> Matt Frank, different Matt <laughs> and so we had all you know we, we like I said it was prime positioning we were caddy corner from a cosplayer an artist that, called, uh, that went by Project Nautilus who had his a replica Millennium Godzilla suit that stared at me the entire weekend I felt like he wanted my soul let me see if I could find that picture I did eventually go and take a picture of it just to show what I was dealing with with him staring at me This entire time. At some point, I'm going to have to make a meme. Yeah, here it is. At some point, I'm going to have to make a meme Mortal Kombat style with this thing. Where, just like Shang Tsung, he says, here we go. Your soul is mine. I mean, seriously, look at that. Look at that. Just try, like you just look a little bit to your left, and there he is staring at you from across the uh, from across the hall. I felt that glare the entire weekend, guys. Entire weekend. (sighs) I know some people be like, "Yes, take my soul," but I'm a wee bit scared. Anyway, so (laughs) that sort of zaniness aside. (laughs) Anyway, so. 
we are invited by some of Michael's friends, Adam and his posse, whatever, cohorts, from Thursday Thursday Toys. I think, how do they call it? They said, no, they said they were his homies. To a Cinco de Mayo party. So we walked all the way over there and got a little bit of a taste of Friday of the Friday night not, oh, that nightlife in uh, Rosemont. I'm going to be honest with you, it wasn't necessarily the most appealing thing to me. And we tried to go into the one restaurant, and I thought we were going to get in trouble because we had Elijah Thomas with us because it was me, Elijah, and Michael plus Adam and his and his homies. I thought we were going to get in trouble because Elijah's underage. He's 18. But, in fact, it wasn't that. They didn't allow people in wearing sandals, and we had two people in our group wearing sandals, including Michael. It's a health... Excuse me. It's a health regulation thing, I suppose. You know, no shirt, no shoes. I guess that sandals count in that regard. Okay. Well, at least we don't have to worry about the potential embarrassment of trying to get a... 18 year old into there and then we tried to go over to another uh, across this uh, across the street to go to another restaurant but they didn't have food they only had drinks and finally i just said hey look a restaurant what was it called crust brewing but they had big neon sign that said beer and pizza I'm like there we go guys that's what we want <laughs> so we went in there and we had dinner and oh boy that conversation that's all i'm gonna say about that oh boy that conversation Anyway, so then we went back to the hotel, tried our best to get some sleep. But this wasn't my first rodeo. I know how conventions are going to go. So I came prepared. I had a four-pack of rain energy drinks to get my morning dose of 300 milligrams of caffeine because I know how this is going to go. So I had that at the ready for the next day. This And since it was Saturday, it was our longest day. It was our busiest day because, again, I've been doing this con thing on the regular for over a decade. I know that Saturday is the busiest day because that's a lot of times if people can only come for one day, guess what day they're picking? They're picking Saturday. So I knew that that one was going to be busy. So as predicted, it was. And we were also going to be in the hall for the longest. It was the longest day, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So thankfully... Our room came with a breakfast buffet, which was very nice. So we all filled up at the beginning of the day, got to meet some people, bumped into Rob and some of his cohorts from Tokyo Lives, which is kind of interesting. I'd never seen them in real life before. And this was also really fun because this was the day the entire Kaiju Ramen slash I don't know. I guess the Kaiju Ramen Posse showed up, but also some people who, well, maybe not necessarily part of the Kaiju Ramen Posse, but I would say they're part of the Posse anyway. You know, my, my immediate friends group in the Kaiju content creator sphere showed up. So we were joined by Winja, the ninja, who I met at G Fest last year, who knew me from initially from the Power Trip and has ju- became a patron on. The Monster Island Film Vault, and has been catching up on that. And also Danny DeManna of the Godzilla Novelization Project, his friend Robert Montserrat, who they've been collaborating with for a while. Brendan Morley of Autistic Lizard Productions. Uh, great to see him there. And fi- and I meant, yeah, I mentioned Winja the Ninja. So that was great. That was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I had to help poor Winja to go meet a couple of the celebrities he wanted to meet, which was Sutomo Tom Kitagawa who famously played Godzilla in the Millennium Godzilla series for all but one movie. And then Jason Font, who was probably the, who from Power Rangers Time Force, who was probably the biggest draw there. Helped that he had a really, really gorgeous wife. So people might have just come over to see her. But anyway, so he wanted to be able to meet them. He needed a little bit of help. He was a little starstruck really nervous so i walked him over there and helped him out so that was some of the first things that we did he had mr font sign one of the power trip articles collections which were like i said were con exclusives so mr font got to look at it for the first time there to get the signature and he was intrigued by that and i'll get back to that in a moment so i was glad that i was able to help poor winja the ninja be able to do that we saw some 
you know, some fun cosplayers and everything while we were there. I'm, I'm glancing back and forth between this and my photos. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying to uh, keep up with everything. Let me see. Are there any panels here? Okay, I'll get to some of those here in a moment. But we did sell lots of product that day. We sold the last of our volume ones and we started burning through our back issues and we started selling the prints for the covers and it's just we was just sort of burning through stuff like people were just coming over and they were talking with us we got to meet some of our kickstarter backers which was great we talked to people who had heard of us but had never bought anything it was amazing being able to talk to people and make connections do some networking it was amazing can't say that enough it was amazing and amidst all of that, got to go to the Tom Kitagawa panel, which, let me see if I can find, uh, I've got several pictures from that. And we, there was some, to say there was interesting stuff that happened during that whole ordeal would be an understatement. But first, let me show you here. Again, join MIFE Max so you can actually get the visuals. But, Here's Mr. Tom Kitagawa there in the center with a moderator and his interpreter. The moderator's on the right. The interpreter's on the left, obviously. What was amusing about this was, much like his fellow Godzilla suit actors, or at the very least, Kempichiro Satsuma, who I've seen before, the, the Heisei Godzilla suit actor, he's very animated and loves telling stories. And... <laughs> What he would do is that he would go over and he would use the moderator uh, to illustrate things. So like where his head position was in the suit and how he would pose himself, how he would move. He would just go over and use the moderator as basically a puppet. And I'm thinking, why can't I have that job? I want that job right now. I seriously, I, th that would be my dream right there. <laughs> would be the moderator for a panel like this and to have him just use me as his living action figure to demonstrate everything. And the, you could tell the interpreter was having a good time with this. She was getting a good laugh and trying to keep up with him. So there was a, it was a good time. Was having, I think who went with us there? It was me and... I think it was, yeah, me, Michael, Winja the Ninja, Andrew is his first name, and I believe Danny and Robert were there as well. I think that's when I finally... Is that when I finally ran into them for the weekend? I don't remember. <sighs> yeah. So that was pretty exciting. Hearing him tell all kinds of stories. <laughs> One of my claims to fame with that... And I, I swear, I wasn't trying to... Oh, one of the things that I'm going to have to start using this as a catchphrase somewhere for, like, Jimmy in the podcast for the Film Vault is... He kept saying, do you understand? And like he would explain things that he would just puncture with it with, do you understand? It became a running gag. But uh, trying to check here. All right. Uh, I think I covered everything from that. But the exciting part, and we'll see how well this shows up, is the panel got crashed right at the end. Okay. Stop me if you've heard this one. Godzilla, Gamera, and Titanicus walk into a bar, or in this case, walk into a panel. <laughs> so they all came through a little door off to the side and just snuck in and crashed his panel. It was like a miniature version of the famous G-Fest costume parade. It was so, so funny. No one anticipated that. I've got some video of it as well, which at some point I might share. I don't want to share it here. You know, you know, just for the sake of, oh, maybe I'll do it in the Patreon exclusive portion. I'll play a bit of the video of it. But that, well, like I said, that was pretty exciting. So let me see. Look at my notes here. What is some something else that was good that happened after that? I did not get video. I didn't get video of this. Elijah, I think, did. But one of the suit actors over there, his name was Ogura. I believe... If, in terms of his kaiju credits, he was Angerous in Final Wars. And he was... I don't even remember who it was with, if it was somebody working the con or if it was a Congo or whatever, but suddenly a professional wrestling match broke out and these guys actually knew what they were doing. Like, they were pulling out 
actual moves. I recognized the moves, and they were doing them fairly well. And they just goofed around in front of everybody and entertained everybody. That was wacky. <laughs> I can't wait to see the video of that at some point. So, and you got to understand, he was just, just from my right anyway. He was just down the aisle to the right from the kaiju ramen table. So I was seeing this whole thing break out. And for a second, people thought it was a real fight. So that was crazy. That was really, really crazy. But then we got one of the best, I think one of the best pictures of the entire weekend. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see. There's the pictures of the common Rider cosplayer that we saw, uh, who I think won the cosplay contest appropriately. Let me see. My picture's of Dore Krause. And Ben Feruya, some of the other stars. But where's... Oh, I don't have it. Oh, no. Oh, no, I don't have it. Oh, not with me. Oh, oh. But it's been... uh, I've... Oh, no, you have seen it. It's the thumbnail for this very live stream. When we all, uh, the entire crew, the entire Kaiju Rama crew got together and... We became the Ultra Brothers because there were six of us. And then we had Ben Furuya as the seventh. And we became the Ultra Brothers because we all posed with him and did the Specium, did this, you know, the the trademark cross Specium beam attack. And I bumped my microphone. <laughs> and what's so funny, and I think I talked about this when Michael and I did our episode on the first AMA, is first off, Ben Furuya, the suit actor, original suit actor for Ultraman, who also did the mocap in Shin Ultraman. For one thing, he is the snappiest dresser in every room he goes to. He's always wearing a really nice suit. It's a lot of times it's bedazzled. It just you you can't not look at the man. He's got sunglasses. He's so snazzy. And what he does is when he takes pictures with people, he expects them to do a cross pose and he will inspect it to make sure they're doing it correctly. And so he went down the line to check to all of our stuff and then we did that. So we did a live stream or Kaiju Conversation Elijah's show. We were talking about, okay, we became the Ultra Brothers with Ben Faroo. Obviously, he's the OG Ultraman, but who are the rest of us? <laughs> that sparked a very interesting debate there. I think Danny ended up being Zoffy. Elijah was Ace, because we had already determined that a long time ago. I think they ended up saying I was Jack, so I'm the Ultraman from <laughs> Return of Ultraman. I mean, I... It, that, that's cool. I can live with that. I can, I can live with that. I don't remember what everybody else was. I wish I could remember. We had some debate over whether or not Leo counted, but if I remember correctly, because I've read the Ultraman wiki, I do think Leo is one of the Ultra Brothers. So I do. Th- so he does count. I just don't think he became an Ultra Brother during his show. But you know, I digress. So there. So there was that. So that was really exciting. That's probably the best picture we got all weekend. It really has to be the best picture we got all weekend. And then, at some point, I can't remember if this was before or after this. It's after this in my notes. But then Michael and I went over and we talked with Jason Font and his wife. I think her, what was her, his wife's name? Angela? I think it was her name was Angela. I could be wrong on that. It's, and we got autographs from him and we spent, I think, probably about 45 minutes talking to him because there just wasn't a lot of people going up to see him at that point. And we gave him a copy of the Power Trip collection, and he absolutely loved it. And then that ended up inspiring some jokes between the three of us because he read the piece on Time Force, and he went, and he's like, "That's the, I got one bone to pick with you guys. Oh, what's that? Second only to in space. And then we had to explain that since it's based on what was said on the podcast, we said we had a slight disagreement he, Michael said Time Force was the best of the Saban era, but barely. I said In Space was the best, but barely. So my, he said, "Okay, Michael, you're my new fa- you're my new best friend," and you know I was the second favorite. Oh well, <laughs> but we had a very pleasant conversation with the two of them. We got a couple of items, which I will show off in the Patreon portion. They got a couple of items signed by him. And if I remember correctly, I do have a picture with him. Let me see if I can find that. I do have a picture with him. That's Dory Krause. That's been for real when I got it by myself. Let me see. Do I have... Do I have those pictures? I do not. 
I do not, unfortunately. It's the all of us were taking pictures the whole weekend, and so we're gonna have to share our stuff together. But yeah, so that was uh, that was really cool. I have to say, I have to say, Jason Font is quite the fella. I love talking to him. I really want to talk to him more. He's gonna be. He's in Legend of the White Dragon, which was the movie project that Jason David Frank had been had been working on for several years before his tragic passing. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing Mr. Font in that. And there's the other thing. Well, Michael already mentioned it on a previous live stream, so I'll just say it here. We got him as an interview or the power trip. We did not ask him. We thought we would ask him. He offered. We didn't have to do anything. He simply offered to do it. He was really impressed with the power trip collection. He said, I get a lot of stuff from fans and I love all of it. But what you guys did is actually looks professional and it's well written and it's honest. I love it. So, bam. There's an endorsement right there. Jason Font just endorsed our magazine. I Right there. Just... I. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. You want to talk about feeling validated at that point. <laughs> Wesley Collins just told me that he approves. It was great. Absolutely. It was just great. I can't say that enough. I'm running out of superlatives and adjectives. <laughs> All right. And then we had dinner at the Caddy Shack, which, or Murray Brothers, which is the restaurant there in the hotel. We had a good time. Found out that there's such a thing as edible golf balls. It's, you know, basically it's like, baked potato uh, baked mashed potatoes in a ball form and you know so we had a good time there got some dinner it was very convenient i remember going there when f for g fest and when it was called something else and they had a godzilla burger but it was only for that weekend and that was pretty tasty they didn't have that this year though and then like i said we did a kaiju conversation bonus live stream and then because i dared elijah to do it because he keeps hyping this thing because he is the littlest gatekeeper and a toku hipster. Told him to bring with him a Blu-ray of the 1989 indie Japanese tokusatsu film, Tetsuo the Iron Man. Which he did. Hilariously, he forgot to bring the remote control. So, because he insisted that I watch Peak Cinema, he ended up going on his laptop and subscribing to Shudder, a streaming service for horror movies, so he could show it to me. I'm still not entirely sure what I watched, but I watched it. Funny thing, because he's seen it several times, he had a better grasp on the plot than I did, but I think I had a better grasp on what the themes and messaging were uh, uh, by, on the... Uh, what the film's messaging and themes were. Basically, I was better at interpreting it than he was, which is funny. And somehow, because trust me, it's not necessarily a loud movie, but there's a lot of screaming and a lot of crazy noises and scenes in this movie. And somehow Michael and Travis managed to sleep through it. And also perhaps this all came about when we were all kind of slap happy. Uh, if you saw the Kaiju Conversation live stream, you'll understand what we're talking about and the things that weren't on the air, good, good Lord. Certain catchphrases are going to be immortalized in my little circle here because of this. That probably shouldn't say on the air because it won't make any sense and I don't want to get canceled. None of us do. <laughs> so that may have not helped. But then... Uh, we ended up staying, Elijah and I ended up staying up way too late because I just wanted to talk with him about it and try it. I used it as an opportunity to gain some insight into Elijah as a person. So it, it, that was a very constructive conversation, I would have to say. So then we get to day three. Day three was our shopping day for the most part. I focused on uh, on a lot of autographs I don't typically buy art unless I really fall in love with the art. And I did have one item. It was a guy. It was actually a Henshin Men listener. Henshin John was his name. And he had this beautiful print 
of classic Ultraman and classic Common Rider together, and I'm like, okay, I want that because that's basically Travis and I on Henshin Man, <laughs> which is why I wanted it. I ended up getting it, and but other than that, as much as I wanted to buy some collectibles, I just didn't have the money. I ran out of money. And even though there were some really cool ones that I was seeing throughout the weekend, I'm like, oh, I kind of want that, you know, some old VHSs that I, Godzilla VHSs that I wish I hadn't parted with because they have the old AIP dubs on them. I found a vintage 1993 Bandai Red King from Ultraman Powered or Ultraman the Ultimate Hero. And I'm weird and appreciate that show, even though it does have some pretty glaring flaws in it. And I just. I, yeah, so there were some things that I didn't get that I wished I had, but I got to meet these guests and have conversations with these guests and get their autographs. And for me, that was more important because they're not going to be there all the time. I can potentially find that Red King anytime I want, maybe. Basically, it's just more likely that I'll be able to find that than anything else. So, let me see. I got a few p more pictures here. I will show off a bit from that day. Let me see. So, here's Dore Krause. We fire this up. Because I did talk with him, get his autograph on that day. So, you can see what he looks like. And, ta-da! Pleasant fellow. He looks a lot different now than he did in the show. <laughs> what was interesting is I told him, people asked him if he would ever come back. It, he seemed like he wasn't quite as interested during his panel, but then when I talked with him, he's like, oh, yeah, I'd come back. You know, If they wanted me to be Jack Shindo, or I asked him if he would voice his Ultraman, because they Super Aya did that for Ultraman Powered from Ultimate Hero, the American Ultraman. And he said, oh, yeah, he would do it. And then what... What surprised me is he did what I told him. It's like, did you know your Ultraman came back? And he's like, he did. And I told him that he makes a cameo in Mega Monster Battle, the movie, but he just there to get swatted by the villain, Ultraman Belial, just swats him out of the way to go on to, while well, he's going on a rampage. And then I told him that he and Powered were the were basically drill sergeants in the absolute conspiracy and i showed him a couple of clips of that and they said yeah and the gudis the main villains that you fought in your show they came back in this special and he didn't know about any of that now he says he's gonna go watch all of it because that was exciting that was exciting for him and i'm like yay so now i really do hope that that means you know now that he's aware of it maybe he'll talk to the right people and be able to uh you know be able to be on the show again, reprise his role in some form or another. Cause I do think he appreciates what he got out of that. So let me see. Oh, and then we did a Kaiju weekly new Kaiju weekly news recording there and even kind of made some sales while it was going on. And then Michael, and I went to Jason fonts panel, which was great. And that's when he was calling us, you know, his new and second favorite it was surprisingly small. I was hoping there would be more people there, but he actually liked it. He was he ended up getting there about twenty minutes late because he was trying to find a moderator because I guess the original moderator just canceled or something like that. And I'm like, he ended up not, not needing one because the crowd was small. But I'm like, Michael, I could have done it for you. It would have been great. <laughs> so let me see if I can find a couple more pictures from that day just to show you. Let me see. So there's one. Uh, that's when I met Ben Furuya. Let me see. And then here's when I met Rie Ota, the suit actress. Yes, actress. One of only two that I know of who've played Kaiju. But she was Baragon in GMK. She is a wonderful, tiny woman. She was so much fun. It's just absolute delight to me and she just really embraced being baragon she was famous for you know a clip in a b-roll where she would go rah, rah, when she was acting for when baragon would roar and obviously the roars get added in post and so she was just having a delightful time she just 
fully embraced it. I told her that it was just wonderful seeing her work and that uh, in the Monster Island Film Vault universe, there are two Baragons on the island. One is the original and one is hers, and hers is female, so we call her Lady Baragon. So I, I, as far as I care, she is now Lady Baragon. And both uh, both original Baragon and Lady Baragon are the are mates, and they are cued together. So she thought it was delightful. So I made Lady Baragon happy. I'm just saying, have you made Lady Baragon happy? I hope you have. Anyway, and then who else do we have here? We have the... Oh, I got to X a few things off here. Now we come to the big one, the one I wished I had mentioned. Okay. First, I need to explain some things, but that'll be good because I need to vamp in order to get to the part of this that's signed. So for those who, you know, for those, who, oh my gosh, uh, one of the crown jewels you're about to see of my Kaiju and Tokusatsu physical media collection. I'm part of the 5K club, the giant master set of Gamera. Gamera is really neat. He is filled with turtle meat. We all love him, Gamera. Anyway, so you know, only 5,000 of these were ever printed, and I got it, people. Where do you think a lot of the research for those episodes came from? This thing. Anyway. All right. But I bring that up because one of the Kennys was there. Uh-huh. But not just any Kenny. No. Not just any Kenny. Let me see. That? No, that's the comic book collection. Okay, so I need this. But not just any Kenny people. It was Carl Craig, who was in Gamera versus Virus. And if you're a hardcore fan of the Monster Island Film Vault, you know where I'm going with this. Because what was the name of his character? In that movie, it was Jim. And then I did the math. I'm like, hold on. 1968, the war in space takes place in 1988. Oh my gosh, they're the same person. <laughs> so yes, it's not David Perrin, for, who, who the actor who played the actual Jimmy in the war in space, but I got the next best thing. <laughs> Carl Craig, who played little Jimmy, <laughs> helping Gamera save the world from a space squid. His, with his best friend, Masao. And I will tell you, I, Jim and Masao are actually, I'm not the biggest fan of show of Gamera, but I will say as Kenny's go, Jim and Masao are my favorite because they're actually they're proactive for one thing. They they're actually helpful and they're genuinely clever. And I mean, they still they're still smarter than the adults. The, the typical Kenny tropes are still there, but they feel much less annoying in this movie compared to the other ones because they're actually making worthwhile contributions to the story and not just being Gamera's little cheerleaders, okay? So I got to meet him. He had props from the movie, a lot of which look like toys because that's how low budget those movies were. And I told him this whole thing. I told him the whole thing about connecting this to the ward space, which he'd never heard about, and now he, wa he wanted to go see it. I told him that I wasn't the only guy to do it. He was right next to the Matt Frank table. And I said, Matt Frank over there, he made this comic book that's in this collection with a guy named Josh Bagosh. And Josh Bagosh, I heard him be interviewed on a podcast. And he's he also says that Jim from that movie is also Jimmy in the war in space. So it wasn't just me. I was I am one of two people who, independent of each other, came up with the same insane fan theory. <laughs> And he thought it was absolutely hilarious and he loved it. So, yes, I have met, I have, quote, unquote, met Jimmy. <laughs> One of them. Now, if I could meet David Parrott, I'm going to lose my freaking mind. 
<laughs> that would be absolutely insane. But here you go. I don't know how well you can see it. This is in my Gamera set. There's my autograph from Carl Craig. I'm so sorry to everyone who is not a patron. I should have talked about him. I should have showed the pictures too. I am so, so sorry about that. But there you go. That is my All Monsters Attack haul. Like I said, there were some things. I wanted to get some collectibles, but I just wasn't able to do that. But I got what's important. I got the autographs and I got pictures because if you get a chance to meet these people from these movies, you really need to take it because you don't know, especially with how old some of them are getting now and we're losing a lot of them. If you get a chance to meet them, take that opportunity. I would say if you go to a con, prioritize spending the money to get autographs and or at the very least get pictures, meet these people, tell them how much you appreciate what they do because they love hearing it, but especially the ones like who were here who just were just wonderful with the fans. Take that opportunity. You can buy a toy. You can buy art. You can buy all those other things at any point, usually. I'm still a little jealous of Michael who got this really cool Yuji Kaida Ultraman art book. I'm just... But anyway, you know, take the opportunity meet those people, make that your top priority at this, and then go buy your collectibles if you feel so inclined. Then I met Masaki Daimon, the star of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla in 1974. This guy was really fun. I was very obsessed with his hair. Wanted to make sure his hair looked good all the time. I got an autograph with him. This was one of the last things I did before everything closed down. And he he actually took a picture of me so he could send it to his wife, which I wasn't sure what to think of that, but sure. <laughs> Look at this crazy America that I met while I was over there. You know, I'm sure he did that for everybody. But the funniest thing was th several of us from Kaiju Ramen actually rode an elevator with him, and there was an one of the other Japanese guests, or maybe it was maybe it wasn't a Japanese guest, but it was a Japanese woman who was there with him, and we were trying to hit the right numbers on. Uh, the, the, the right buttons in the elevator to get to the floor we wanted to, and they were trying to get to floor six, and right when we got to floor six and the door opened, he just turned around and he said, six, not sex. <laughs> Which made the, ja the Japanese woman with him just laugh because obviously their English is... You know, they only know a little bit of English, and sometimes there's misunderstandings or mispronunciations. I thought it was funny, and I reminded him of it when I met him, and he remembered that, and he thought it was funny, too. So, anyway, anyway, I think that just about covers everything that we did. Yeah, we had, we got dinner at Caddyshack again, and then Travis, Michael, and I drove his freaking minivan back it was a long drive about three hours we lost an hour this time because we crossed from central to eastern time zone and we spent a lot of our time either just chit-chatting about the weekend or watching clips of snl celebrity jeopardy and then some family feud bloopers because that's what you do right that's just what you do anyway some overall thoughts about this con before i transition into the Patreon exclusive portion of this live stream. It is an improvement over last year, but I don't think it's quite the G-Fest killer that they want it to be. I know the artists were happier. It sounded like the other vendors who were not the artists weren't quite as happy this year as they were last year. And they made the improvement of having more programming going on, more panels, just so people had other things to do other than shop and talk to celebrities. As I mentioned, we did lots of networking. I would definitely go back. I'm hoping that they expand the amount of programming that they do if they ever want people like myself or Danny DeManna or anybody from Kaiju Ramen to come and do some sort of a presentation there a la G-Fest. I would be more than happy to do it. Just let me know if you would be, uh, if, if they just need to you know, open up submissions for things like that, and I will gladly do it. So... Yeah, overall thoughts. It was a uh, it was it was excellent, and I hope it continues because 
they're on an upward trajectory. They really are. I think moving to Chicago was, I mean, it was a bold move taking over GFS old stomping grounds, no pun intended. And I think if they keep on this trajectory, they'll be able to definitely be some serious competition for G Fest going forward. I did meet people who, you know, went to G Fest and they were there at that convention. So it was great to see them there. But like I said, like I said, wonderful experience. I'm looking forward to next year. I would love Kaiju Rama to table there again. We'll have even more stuff to promote when we're there. And, you know, because we're not tabling at G-Fest as of right now, you know, so maybe next year we'll be able to do that. But anyway, you know, it's an excuse to get me to go to Chicago because I really don't want to visit Chicago unless I have a reason like that to go. And, oh, we got someone in the chat. We got someone in the chat. Kaiju Media Junkie. Great to see you, my friend. Great to see you. (laughs) <laughs> I, I've been kind of feel I've been feeling a little lonely. It's just sitting here. And it just feels like I'm just doing a, a solo recording, and you know I'm not actually interacting with anybody. But I, I I don't know how much you've been watching. But I'm about to actually transition to the Patreon exclusive portion of this, where I'll be showing off my haul from All Monsters Attack, and then giving a, an update on where things stand with the remainder of season three of the podcast. Okay. So anyway, speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Thanks once again to all of you for, you know, for listening. For everybody we met at the con, it was wonderful being able to see Kaiju Ramen's backers and some of the fans and listeners of the podcast. Yeah, it was it was absolutely wonderful. So, make sure that you listen to the credits and check out all of the socials and keep up with all of that. You know, uh, check out Kaiju Ramen Media on kaijuramanmedia.com. Check out the podcast network while you're there. Check out the latest issues of Kaiju Ramen Magazine. We got a lot of cool stuff. Issue 9 is coming out soon, which will be dedicated to the 90th anniversary of King Kong. And I did write an article on that one. Mine was on what I who, who I call Kong's Queen. So it's all the leading ladies from the official King Kong movies, even though admittedly that's a little bit debatable of a definition, but I'm not here to settle that dispute because I don't think anybody can. Not even Raymond can settle that. <laughs> the lawyer who hangs out on the island with MIFV8. I just, it's just not going to happen. I just, no one can decide what to do. And I feel like my shameless self promotion has been kind of terrible this time around. I do want to give you know a shout out to all of you on MIFV Max. You know, Chris Cook and Michael Hamilton, Travis Alexander, uh, Eli Harris, uh, the Indescrite one, Brad Edelman, Christopher Reiner. Uh, I know I'm missing by Winch of the Ninja. I'm not shouting all of you out. I'm doing a terrible job. But like I said, there's a lot of stuff. This is why I have very extensive show notes for every single freaking episode. So that way I don't necessarily have to reiterate it constantly like this. For any patrons I left out, you're wonderful. I love you. Bex from Redeemed Otaku. I love all of you. You help make this possible. Thank you for what you do. And for the Henshin Men listeners, thank you for sticking with this show. Despite all of its ups and downs, I, I am eternally grateful for all of that so now that i have thoroughly shamelessly self-promoted well jimmy i this is an mif i don't have jimmy to say to cue the credits but i will now transition to the patreon portion and show off what i actually got at the convention thank you for listening to the monster island film vault a podcast produced and hosted by nate marching If you want to join the discussion and be heard on the show, we'd love to hear from you. So email us at feedback at monsterislandfilmvault.com. Our website is monsterislandfilmvault.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Monster Island Film Vault. And on Twitter, where our handle is at TheMonsterIsla1. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, and TikTok. Follow Jimmy from NASA on Twitter at NASA Jimmy and our many other colorful characters using the links in the show notes. The podcast logo was created by Tyler Souls from TylerDrawsComics.com. Our theme song is Wanderer on the Offensive, live edit by B33J, Serax, Juan Madrano, and Nonsensical Lexus, which is a remix of Counterattack, Battle with the Colossus, and 
The Opened Way, Battle with the Colossus, by Koatani from the video game Shadow of the Colossus. All film and audio clips belong to their respective copyright holders, and no infringement is intended or implied. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and or Podchaser to spread the word about the show. You can also support us by joining MIFV Max on Patreon. The Monster Island Film Vault is a Moonlighting Ninjas Media production. Sayonara! Yeah.